Alright, I'm standing here with Jason Hood, president of Chicago Herb Society, and also a very frequently seen figure here at the Tinley Rotala Expo. Jason is very well known for working with a species that is totally underappreciated, a species of snake that no one really works with. We're talking about Susties, the South American puffing snakes. Now, they're amazing, they're polymorphic, just all kinds of cool colors and completely underrepresented in the herb hobby. Jason, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the ones you're working with? Well, this is actually uh, Gavin Brinks. He's, uh, he produced the litters the last three years in captivity here. But um, this is a female that he purchased in a group with, uh, with me. Um, actually, let me grab this other one here because these are, like you said, they're polymorphic. So they're, we've had litter mates here in the past that, to show just how polymorphic they are. Um, yeah, this is a beautiful snake. I mean, the cool thing is about it, it's a South American colubrid. It gets huge. I mean, gigantic proportions. If you're a fan of some of the larger colubrids, this is definitely a species you want to look into. Totally unappreciated. These two are actually the same species. Uh, this is just a year younger. Gavin produced this one here. This is the male he has up. Um, and this is a female. And they'll actually go, they start out looking like arboreal bush, uh, arboreal eyelash vipers. They're all born looking exactly the same. And as they develop, they change five or six times in coloration. Awesome. They go through, instead of one octogenic color change, they go through five or six of them. So this one could, in theory, possibly turn out looking like that, but very unlikely at this point. It's big enough that it should have already started changing its colors. And this guy's actually in shed. But, uh, so there's, they, they come in oranges, yellows. This has got this bluish gray color. The greens, there's purple ones down in uh, south of, or in Costa Rica still that uh, some of them that came up recently are possibly the fathered by that one. The guy that has them, it doesn't do a great job of keeping track of what's from what, but they're just some of the, the, the coolest snakes out there. And they're also, I got some videos on YouTube. These guys are some of the fastest eating snakes you, you've ever seen. These and Spilotes just inhale food. They're ridiculous. They're amazing, man. They're so beautiful and so underappreciated. I mean, and they're such impressive animals. They get really good girthy size. Like what's the average size of an adult? These guys get, uh, as adults, six to nine feet. These are the smaller Susties. And then I got the Sulfuris over here as well. Those get 10 to 14 feet. So they're, they're, the 14 foot is one of, what, six different species that are all claimed to get 14 feet. Uh, I've never seen a specimen in, in a museum record that's actually 14 feet, but I don't think there's any for any of those guys that claim to be 14. But right. they're definitely coming in 10 to 12 feet quite frequently with the Sulfuris. And that's that's no joke of a snake, especially a wild caught. But the the captive bred ones are really placid. They're actually pretty cool and laid back. Yeah, um, I was gonna ask you like general care. I mean, are they are they pretty easy snakes? Uh, it, you know you know how to house an ATB? I, I've been familiar with them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're I mean, very similar to ATBs. They need high humidity. Uh, unlike ATBs, these guys will soak if they if they're going to go in the shed. So it puts a little less stress on you for keeping the humidity where it's supposed to be. Um, these guys will get in and soak no problem. Um, and here, hold this, and we'll get out the sulfurous just for fun. If all you right, want, we're gonna pull out the sulfurous. If you want to do Susie's, let's here do we Susie's go. Right. We're doing Susie's all the way because that's how we do it here. That's right. No, this is great. This is a really amazing opportunity. This, I mean. Yeah, no, nobody really works with these species, like I said, and Jason's you know, doing a great job of, of working with them and hopefully getting out more information about them. Now, that is just a damn impressive animal. Look at that. That is gorgeous. So, wow. Um, Susties, what Susties, this guy's actually in shed, so sorry for his little dull appearance here, but um, Susties, what the translation from Latin is, is liars, like bluffing, lying snakes. It's because they puff. And since he's in shed, he might puff for us, but he's been so... He's so laid back, he's hard to get him to puff anymore. He's doing a little in his neck here. Awesome. Yeah, but yeah. they will they will puff up from his head down to about here, double or triple size, double or triple girth. He's doing it here. You can see him puffing randomly in, in his midsection. There, there you go. A little more of a puff there. Nice, a nice. A little un unhappy with me. What an impressive um, animal. Some guys say these guys come in and they're just terrors. They bite like crazy. This guy's obviously not a problem. This guy took down a small rat in, I think it was about four seconds. So you're talking about fast feeding. They'll, they grab, they gulp. Um, one of the smaller females I got, I reached in after I was feeding her. And it wasn't, you know, it was my fault, feed response bite. They don't, they really don't bite. But uh, as a feed response, she saw something moving. It's gotta be food. She grabbed my finger and had my finger swallowed before I even realized she was biting me. Oh my God. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you're working with this, Jason. This whole genera is just amazing. Um, keep up the good work with them and let us know how it goes and, and what we discover because there's nothing known about them really, I think, in captivity so far. So it's important that somebody like you and you know a couple others are taking the time to do that. Awesome. Thanks for one talking to thing, us. One of the neat thing about these, it's uh, I just realized you got a female there. So she's smooth keeled across her back and a male here and he's so small but you can see on this guy the males of the bacillus notice will be uh, heavily keeled like this guy I don't know if you got a close up of that or not Andy but the uh, the, the keels are these on the on the adult male bacillus notice are like almost little razors they're they're so heavily keeled they're sharp to touch actually the females don't get that so I don't know what that purpose of that is in the wild but you can actually look at an adult from 10 feet away and tell a male female because they're just so heavily keeled and they get that black ridge. You don't see that kind of dimorphism in, in, in reptiles like that. So cool. So they're, yeah, they're, you get color dimorphism, sexual dimorphism in the scalation, incredible feeders when they, when they do feed, they grow like crazy. I mean, they're just one of the coolest snakes out there and unfortunately, other than a handful of people who are really into them, almost no one's paying attention to them yet. Well, that's who we're trying to bring them into the spotlight, and congratulations on working with such an awesome species. I wish you a lot of luck with them, and uh, keep us posted on what happens with them. Absolutely. Awesome. We should have some baby Priscilla notice next year for you to look okay, at. We will be buying, not looking at them, for sure. We'll be trading <laughs> some tigers. Yeah, that's a possibility always. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Man. It's another Urban Jungles Radio production.